Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. You know the deal. I didn't really know what to do with this week, um, with this video. Everything that's happened this week, in the last two weeks with Sarah's murder in the UK, and then finding out all these stories about a black girl named Blasting who's been missing and no one cared until a white girl was murdered. And then the shooting in Atlanta. Um, it's just been depressing and it's really impacted how if I want to read, i.e. I haven't been wanting to read. Um, and it's just, I have the privilege in all these situations still to be able to walk away just minus being a woman. Um, and then I saw a stat, a few stats actually, it was an infographic on social media that per capita Canada is actually experiencing more hate crime towards Asian Americans and Asian Canadians, or I guess it Asian Canadians, you know what I mean than the United States. Um, this isn't something new in Canada, um, especially in Toronto and Vancouver, where there is giant issues with the housing markets. There is specific targeting towards um, people, Asian people who either immigrate or first generation, second generations, whatever it may be, um, targeting them and blaming them for all of the issues going on. And then we just ignore the fact for Ever, it seems that you know we had Japanese internment camps so like it didn't feel like this is something I should not acknowledge and even though I can walk away from it that's not what being a good ally is so I've seen some book lists for you know recent releases or releases from you know I think Book Riot did one of you know books that they have released coming out from um, Pacific Asian American um authors so i wanted to kind of continue moving along that wave with books coming out um that have covers that are from asian american and some asian canadian authors and that we shouldn't just support these communities when someone a white supremacist goes and murders people in atlanta georgia this should be something we are always actively fighting against and i as a white person am trying to be more self-conscious of where i spend my dollars so um, I'll also put this graphic here. I've only seen one that's United States relevant, um, but a graphic of bookstores owned by Asian Americans. So um, trying to support them if possible. Um, if anyone knows of a Canadian one, I, w I would love to know. <laughs> we don't have a, a I think I've only ever seen one graphic and it was for like indigenous owned bookstores, which is great. Um, but I would also like to know Asian and black book owned bookstores. So, but this is the one I have seen. So if you are American, um, this is probably a bit more accessible to you that these are some bookstores that you can buy and support. So I am sure I don't have all of the books um, that are coming out, but these are just the ones that I know. So starting off Steel Striker by Marie Lu. This is the sequel to Sky Hunter. Marie Lu is a very well-known YA author. I absolutely love her book Kingdom of Bach. Um, I haven't been able to, to get into her fantasies or sci-fis quite as much, but um, she's very popular and this cover reveal just came out. So while you're waiting for this book to come out, you can buy or, and or, if you're like me, probably own it and haven't read it yet, um, pick up Sky Hunter. There's also Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. Uh, this is the author of the Spin the Dawn duology. I believe this is a standalone. And this is the beautiful US cover. It's gorgeous. And she also got some just stunning UK covers as well. Um, I think I did that in my last video. So uh, she has three books now for you to pick from her duology and this standalone. Then there is Black Water Sister by Zen Cho. Um, I, I think I've read two books by this author and I really liked one of them if I'm remembering it right. Um, but this cover is just gorgeous. <laughs> it's, I, I love this cover so much. So hopefully this is one that you can maybe take a look at and hopefully enjoy. Then there is Ava Evergreen, The Cursed Witch. Ava Evergreen and The Cursed Witch, sorry by Julie Abe. This is the sequel to Ava Evergreen, The Semi-Magical Witch. Um, that was her first book and this is the, the sequel to it. So, uh, if you like Kiki's Delivery Service, um, definitely suggest picking up the first book. It was very fun and very cute and very Kiki's Delivery Service vibes. And if you need help getting through, you know, a middle grade book, we are doing in May, uh, middle grade May. So if you can find some books by some Asian authors, middle grade, including this one, then this can help you you know, get through those books and keep supporting these authors. I believe she's actually based in France and originally from England, but um, I feel like it's all a lot of the same market and 
as someone from Canada, I can attest that things don't stop at borders um, and racism and xenophobia and all that shit is not going to stop just in the North American continent, unfortunately. So I thought I'd suggest Girls of Fate and Fire by Natasha Nyang. This is the third and final book, I believe, in the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy. Um, I don't know that she has anything else um, sold to come at this point, but I know she has books one and two in the series that you can read while you're waiting for this third book. Then there is All These Bodies by Kendare Blake. Unfortunately I've never really enjoyed Kendare Blake's stuff but she's very popular and I'm glad so many people do enjoy it. She also gets some really nice covers including this one. This one looks really, you know, it's like the the fog and everything on it. I think I said last last video too. I was like no this is just not for me. When I look at the cover I don't think it's for me but that doesn't mean it's not a good book and it's not going to be for someone. So if you are a fan of Kendra Blake and or darker e horror -y YA stuff this is probably one to take a look at. There is The Heart Principle by Helen Wong. Um, this is the third I think it's final which makes me sad in the Kiss Quotent trilogy world. Um, I know that the author's mother is a Vietnamese immigrant and um, the author also has um, as Asperger's um, and that's represented in, in the books so I believe there's going to be o o C OCD representation uh, in this book but she always has uh, Asian main characters so far and she's an amazing writer so I can't wait for this book. Then there is Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. She is originally, I found out, born in Calgary. I just re recently found out she's Canadian, but she's specifically from Alberta, which is wild. I think she lives in Northern United States now. Um, but this is the third book in the Jade uh, War trilogy. It's been optioned. It's an amazing book. The first book I've, is the only one I've read. I plan on reading the sequel soon. Um, it's amazing. So this is the third book uh, in, I believe it's a trilogy. So you can read Jade War, Jade, no, it's Jade War, Jade City, no, Jade City, then Jade War, and then Jade Legacy, I think is. So you have two books to read and they're fantastic. I would highly, highly suggest them and I can't wait to buy my own physical copies. Unfortunately, my bookstore doesn't have any in stock, but next time I place an order, it's in my, my cart. Jade Fire Gold. I am just beyond excited for this book. Um, even though I've been moving away from a lot of YA fantasies, I am so absolutely freaking excited for this book. I have been waiting, it feels I think like two years now since it got announced and it's moved publishers I think at least once, maybe twice. The date's been pushed a few times but now we have a cover <laughs> and this is debut work as well. So I am so excited for whenever this book comes out and I just absolutely freaking love the cover. Then there's The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joanne He. Uh, this is her new series. I think it's a duology right now under, I believe it is Macmillan Publishing Houses. She did have a book come out before called The Descendants of the Crane, which I would absolutely recommend. It's a fantastic book. I'm so sad there's not gonna be a companion book to that. Everything was set up for that to happen. Um, and then uh, it was this whole thing in late 2020 that she kind of came out, not kind of, she came out and had said her her publisher wasn't paying her royalties in North America for that book and she'd been going through this legal route and they still hadn't paid her, they stopped communicating until you know the last minute and then they don't follow through on what they're going to promise and so because of that they lost copyright right to it. She It reverted back to her and she has since sold it to my understanding to Macmillan and it is getting a new cover. So if you are interested in picking up this book, please do not, unless she has stated otherwise um, on her Twitter, you know, follow her Twitter or just ask her directly. Um, but she's asked repeatedly, please do not buy the North American copy. She has not been receiving her royalties for it. Um, and they literally are violating copyright laws by still selling it. Um, so if you want it, buy the UK copy for now or just wait around um, until the Macmillan one uh, copy comes out and but I would really suggest pick up the UK copy. It's then there is not here to be liked by Michelle Quad Quatch sorry Quatch. This is one that's probably not going to be for me but that's fine not every book is for me. It looks like a fun contemporary YA book and I like that we're moving into the they're hiring illustrators to like just draw people instead of stock photos and like Faceless, faceless girls in ball gowns and um, yeah this is just another one too if you're a fan of contemporaries take a look at this one. Axie O is not a debut author but this is probably the first book of hers that I will read is XOXO. It's coming out this summer. The main character meets some guy I think it's in like New York or something like that and then goes to Korea for a vacation I think it is 
and runs into him and it turns out he's like some k-pop idol from the summer i think i remember being like oh he's g dragon so <laughs> Um, and it just looks like I'm gonna consume it. I will even if ever even if every single time I read them I'm like, oh, this is very like YA centered like as a grown adult. It's not so much for me, which is fine Not every book is going to be for me I will continue I will still read all the books that involve around k-pop because I just like it So <laughs> this is one I'm definitely picking up and I absolutely love the colors of this cover Just like the purple the pinky purpley yellowy. I love that so much. It's gorgeous I will be uh, Definitely buying my own copy of luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. She also wrote the downstairs girls She also has a couple other books in her back catalog. I have not read those yet but they are on my plan on my you know tbr to get to um i will forever recommend the downstairs girls it is it is such a good book it was so good it talked about things i didn't realize it was going to talk about um and it was just so good so i am so excited luck of the titanic i believe it's four it's four or two i'm starting to, all these books blend together in my head as soon as i start talking about them um but um these i think children like acrobats are on the titanic um and it's, I guess, uh, based on a true story of like uh, some Chinese children smuggling themselves onto the Titanic. Um, and it just sounds amazing. The concept, anything with like uh, tightrope walkers, acrobats, all that stuff is really interesting to me. Um, anything said on the Titanic, very interesting to me. And Stacey Lee as an author, I've really liked Downstairs Girls and I want to keep reading her stuff. So you have a back catalog and this to look forward to. I honestly haven't really heard anything about this book but I saw the cover and the cover is just has just stopped me in my track um folklore uh I couldn't find it for the longest time because I kept typing in folklore without realizing it but folklore by Angela Mi Young Her and I believe I saw somewhere originally she's Asian American and she's based in Sweden I want to say now um so I'm this is just a beautiful cover and I had never heard of the author before this cover so I'm very excited to pick this up and give it a read when it comes out. Then there's The Last Fallen Star by Gracie Kim. This is coming out from the Rick Riordan imprint. We can always count on the Rick Riordan imprint to give us some representation. Um, this is an author, I believe she's actually based in New Zealand so she is not in the United States or Canada um, but New Zealand, Australia, Canada, we've all done similar horrible shit all as part of the Commonwealth. Um, so I think this is just, you know, it's still applicable, really. Um, and it's supposed to be about a, um, a Korean American girl, I believe. Um, and it's just another fun middle grade book that I'm really looking forward to. Everything that comes out of the Rick Riordan imprint, I want to read. <laughs> and this is a debut work by Gracie Kim. Another author I will always recommend people read is Tracy Chi. This actually comes out in 2022. I think everything else I mentioned comes out in 21, but they did a cover reveal for this super early, which is great. A Thousand Steps Into Night. I think it's in January or February 2022 um, announcement. No, 20. I think it's a 2022 uh, release. Um, you have a back catalog to go through, though. She had We Are Not Free, um, which is a uh, historical fiction about the Japanese internment camps in the United States. And then she has the Speaker Trilogy, which is, or what's it called officially? Uh, the series Sea of Ink and Gold or the Speaker Trilogy. They changed it partway through. I think I'm not totally sure what it's called anymore, but that was a fantastic YA fantasy. And then you also have We Are Not Free and you have this to look forward to. I talked about this book in my last video and several people were like, oh my god, that's beautiful. I hadn't seen that. I cannot freaking wait for The Keeper of Night by Ky Kylie Lee Baker. This just looks stunning. And when I was reading, uh, there was like an interview online with the cover reveal with the author. When I was reading it and like t looking at the summary a little bit, it's not identical, but it made me think a little bit of uh, A Seven Shadows. What's it called? It made me think a little bit of Seven De Deadly, it made me think a little bit of like this structure, like the plot and everything that being is being structured around. It made me think of this. So um, I was interested in this. I am absolutely going to be picking up this. Probably will just pre-order a, pre a copy because that cover is gorgeous. Then there is The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Her. Is it Her? Yeah, June Her. This is a Canadian author actually. And she wrote, um, oh no, what is it? 
This is the author of The Silence of Bones and it's another mystery YA. Thinking, I think I gave The Silence of the Bones like a four out of five star, so it was definitely enjoyable. And then the cover got revealed for this and I was like, oh, it's so pretty. So I am definitely very excited to give this a, a read when it comes out. Then there is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto? Sutanto? So this book caught my interest actually even before the cover got revealed, but the cover is awesome. But it's a rom-com murder mystery. <laughs> I was like, how do you, how do you blend those two? Uh, haven't read it yet. It hasn't come out yet, but I am very curious to give it a shot when it does come out. Interest peaked on how an author is going to have some I guess a lot of dark humor interwoven with a romantic comedy. Then there is You Have Reached Sam by Justin Tho. Um, this looks like a book that's probably gonna make me cry and I don't know that I would normally pick it up even though the cover is beautiful um, until I saw my name in the title. <laughs> sure, it may be a contemporary but it has my name in the title so probably gonna give it a shot but I also just really love the whole like one side is blue and the other side is pink and it's the main character is grieving the death of I believe it's her boyfriend and then she gets a call from the boyfriend or something like that it sounds very like I don't know sad romance grieving sort of book speaking of k-pop as I just did the other t other moment uh there's the book idol gossip coming out this is a debut work um, I believe the author works for the New York Times um and so I'm very curious about this. The cover was what stopped me on my Twitter timeline because I was like, oh, the way I got so excited about K-pop Confidential because I saw it and I was like, that's Mew Mule. Like, ooh, ooh. but I couldn't figure out exactly. Maybe this is like the, the leader from Twice. I don't know. Either way, I'm very excited and I will most definitely give this a read. <laughs> the Donut Trap. This just came out the cover reveal, I think it was last week um, by Julie Tu. I believe this is a debut work. Um, I am curious about this. I like I like that we're putting food on covers now. For a while I feel like it was just Katie Henry's books that was like the only ones I was seeing with food on the cover but that's very quickly kind of changed up. So I'm very curious about this and the cover is bright and colorful and maybe that'll be something I'd want to consume in the summer. Then there is The Jasmine Product Project by Meredith Ireland. I did hadn't this book really didn't register on my radar until it, it the cover reveal came out and it just looks like a fun light YA probably closer to middle grade um contemporary and the last in this list is Feather and Flame by Livia Blackburn this is the next book in I don't know what the series is being called but Rebel Rose came out it was like a remeshing of Disney princesses in historical fiction context and the first one was Beauty and the Beast because it's YA and we can't do anything without Beauty and the Beast this is Mulan inspired I am very curious about this. I haven't read the Rebel Rose book, partially because I was hesitant because I'm tired of Beauty and the Beast. Um, also really big fan of the Mulan concept. And um, I read, uh, what was it, Untouched, I think, by this author, um, which I remember enjoying uh, for the most part. And I had a really pretty cover too. So I am really excited to give this a read. So I will make sure to link all of these authors down below, not just their book pages. I want to link their authors um, because they have back catalogs, many of them. And the great thing about Goodreads is a lot of these books are put on lists and you will be able to go on that page of whatever book. And there's normally a list of, you know, books, books with Asian characters, books by Asian authors, books with, you know, whatever it may be. So this is just, you know, a stepping stone on that path. These are some books you can be thinking about pre-ordering um, or borrowing from the library, requesting it for the library to purchase, whatever it may be, um, to continue supporting these authors. And um, I know this doesn't fix all of the horrible shit that's happening, but this is just one way we can support these people. Also take a look around. There are GoFundMes for several of the families who um, their fam their their aunts, their mother in some cases, um, were murdered by that white supremacist in Georgia. And um, just check in on your friends, even if they're not expressing grief on social media. It doesn't mean they're not going through it. And um, that's it. Stop Asian hate. Stop bigotry. I, I can't believe we're in 2020 and having 2021. I can't believe we're in 2021 and still having to say this and then there's still what like 50% of white people it seems like who are like well that's actually really oppressive to me that I can't go mass murder a bunch of people because of their race like what the fuck is wrong with people anyways um if you have any more suggestions uh please feel free to put them down below 
and I am so sorry to everyone who feels targeted and I hope I can help in whatever way um, they ask or see fit.